Aloha, and Tashi Delay from Kauai Tibetan Buddhist Dharma Center. Here on the island of Kauai in Hawaii, we present this class every Thursday night, 6 to 8 o'clock, and Zoom it out globally to all our Vajra brothers and sisters in other time zones and record it on our website so that they can view it at their leisure. I'm Lama Tashi. In understanding the Dharma, wisdom nature of your own consciousness, the first thing that we present this class for is so that you understand that it's, it's not something outside of you. It's an innate state of awareness that all sentient beings possess. But only in the human condition can one connect to it. And the, the obstacle to doing that is what we call ego fixation. The idea of a self or a soul existing separately from the world around us and the beings in it. And this idea of separation sets up what they call dualistic fixation. That because self and others are considered to be separate, then a judgment arises about that idea which exists in our minds. And from there, it takes off to form from the judgment about what we are thinking, our thoughts, that some are good and some are bad, some are superior and some are inferior, and that we have a state of ignorance about what to do about those um, judgment calls which cause the conflicting emotions to arise spontaneously in, in our stream of being. Now, that in itself is the main reason, this, this judgmental mind is the main reason we present the class in the format that we do and change the format every week. And then here locally, we offer this uh, to the people that visit us here in Hawaii that are Dharma brothers and sisters or interested in the Dharma by congregating at our stupa, which we just completed. And when I say just completed, I mean redid the whole stupa by putting new pathways around the main part and a new pathway around the, the prayer wheels and three stupas that are the outer part. And then are constructing walls to prevent flooding into that area. And, and now the last step was to put electric wire fence around the whole perimeter to keep the wild pigs out that were coming in damaging the gardens and lawn, lawn area. Also, we, we have a new entrance to access the supa for when we have gatherings uh, to perform the practices together, retreats. And uh, we may use that next month when Losar, um, the, the Tibetan New Year, which is celebrated on Losar the 20, 22nd of January. But um, Honolulu and Kauai Dharma Centers for sure will be doing that. We, we haven't decided yet. In practicing the Dharma, we have 
four ideas that we meditate on. Four, th four thoughts about the reason that we need to do this. And the first one, the most important one, is that we have the eight opportunities to practice the Dharma and we are free of all negative influences that would prevent us from doing that. Negative situation. The second thought that encourages us to practice the Dharma is that everything is impermanent. And to simplify the, the, the thought about that, it boils down to one doesn't know what comes first, the next breath or the next life. So one should practice Dharma now. The third is karma, cause and effect. We have a saying here in Hawaii, what goes around comes around, but it's more than that. Each and every one of us carries baggage from previous lives, negative and positive influences that are not apparent, subconscious, into this life and each life that we move into upon leaving our form behind. So we should practice now to, pre to prepare for the next life by deleting the negative influences through the Dharma practice with the guidance of the Lamas and emphasizing our positive tendencies and abilities. The fourth thought that turns the mind to Dharma that this conditioned existence that we've put ourselves into through taking birth in the womb and in this life is unfavorable. And, and how is it unfavorable is because everything is constantly changing. But we think everything is solid, fixed, and permanent. And because everything is constantly changing, we move from desirable situations to undesirable and back again. And how do we do that is through our physical, mental, emotional activities of our body, speech, and mind. Now, these four thoughts <clears throat> are the basis of all the tantric and sutra tradition of Tibetan Buddhism. And in the Kagyu lineage, when we do the 40-month retreat, each of these four is practiced in meditation about them 10 hours a day for 28 days, each one. So that's the, the first four months of the retreat is spent solely on meditating and reflecting on these four thoughts that turn the mind to Dharma. When we practice the Dharma, there is a situation where once you reach a certain stage of practice, these good qualities that are inherent are the, are the antidote to the bad actions of our body, speech, and mind, the negative. Because everyone has this desire for happiness and aversion to pain and suffering. When the four powers of the practice are properly applied, then any sin or negative activity can be purified. It's that the effects or the karma 
results are counteracted, are counteracted with these four powers that evolve from the practice. The first is the power of renunciation, which is very simply simple to feel doubt about negative activity, making mistakes, harming self, others, and the environment, and so forth. And the real remedy is to renounce them and not to and have the intention never to do them in the future. The second power is the power of reliance on the supports, which are the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, Lama, deities, and retractors. And this reliance sets up confidence in the absolute nature of their support bringing out the absolute nature of your own natural mind or consciousness as higher states of intelligence. The power of the remedy is simply... Is that the third one? That was the second one, the power of reliance. The power of the remedy, is that the third one? The power of the remedy is knowing that all good and back to activity activity to be only relatively manifesting as phenomena and has no ultimate reality. And that is to understand the nature of sunyata or voidness, which is the nature of everything, including what you think, your thought. But I'm going to read you the fourth one, which is to to myself, disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> this, it, this is called the expression of the appreciation towards those who harm us. Mm. All, whether they be animals, humans, or spirit. And how do we do this? It's by dedicating offerings which we make every day of not only the practice but physical offerings such as torma, food, alcohol, meat, flowers, incense, water, and all the various activities that we do, building stupas, setting up dharma centers, all of that is to show appreciation towards those who harm us. And the, the various ways that we set this up is some of them are for animals. Some of them are to repair damage done to us by human, human beings or human beings that intend to harm us. But actually in shamanistic practice, most of what we do is to, pre to show appreciation to spirits, which are unseen, but exist, and who we have dealt with because we have interacted with them in previous lives many times. How is that? Is these spirits have long lives, animal and human, mostly short life. But spirits are in a timeless situation where if we match our temporal existence to theirs, it's thousands of years. In any case, our prayers and offerings to, to the providers of these negative conditions which are causing us pain and suffering is simply to express our gratitude towards them as aids to our practice and as the reason for doing what we do in these practices. Wow. <laughs> these two stages of such appreciation, I have to read this, <laughs> arise when negative conditions occur. It's no use to fight them. 
And we must understand that. Having understand them in this way, we then feel gratitude that such situations occurs because of our karma, and we pray that they that each and every one that is harmful or causes us pain or suffering will end and be and that will be the last of such negative flare up, which all the all though useful did present a negative obstacle and caused us to experience pain and suffering. The second phase of this reliance is showing concern that the obstacles are also created by one's ego and the unseen forces connected with that egocentric state of awareness. And we actually are propelling ourselves into these situations which we would rather not be in. That's the second one. So with the understanding of how to deal with them, then we show appreciation for those situations arising and acting accordingly with Dharma, with these Dharma practices. How do you show appreciation? Huh? How do you show appreciation? By, by understanding your own karma of you put yourself okay. then it's us. either in this present life or thousands of times in past life. And you'd rather not have this occur again in the future. Exactly. So you act <laughs> by understanding just that. Okay. By practicing Dharma. There's more to this than I've just read, but that's enough disturbance for one night. <laughs> <laughs> and this comes from a used book I got out of Amazon <laughs> from Lama Kenso Taisa to Rinpoche. Way to go is the name of this book. And if you read this book and understand what you are reading, it comes in two parts. Um, the first part is how to properly engender the two bodhicittas of compassion for everyone else and the bodhicitta of voidness which applies to everything. This is, a, this is a dream. This is an illusion. This is no more real than the sun's reflection on the water. But, but what? You have to understand that. Then by understanding it, then you can free yourself of, of believing it to be true because there are two truths. That's the relative truth, believing that. The, the ultimate truth is that it's actually that way. And all the lineage masters up to the present day, my choice of the best one to, that, that I read about, studied about, was Miller Reva, one of our lineage masters, who was not a householder, not a monk or young, none, but um, a solitary yogi. He lived by having a teacher named Karmapa that trained him over a period of 13 years and how to deal with the illusion and see that in its reality, how to be while still in the human body. And that's a great accomplishment. And by him doing that in, in, the, in Tibet, accomplished Buddhahood in one lifetime and became a lineage master. What what is this Buddhahood? Is it 
The word Buddha is actually a made up word for common terminology. The real word for Buddha is a human being who attains the ultimate realiz realization and by that maturity in the human condition, which means you have higher states of intelligence that are not existing in human society today. These higher states of intelligence. Because if they were embedded in our social programs, political, materialistic, social, family, economically, ecologically, spiritually, or religiously, then we wouldn't be in the situation that we are globally today. And I mean each and every one of it. And the key word is the second thought that turns the mind to Dharma. Impermanence. This climate crisis, these disturbing spiraling effects of bacterial and viral diseases and many other damaging situations. We just experienced one at Christmas. Thousands and thousands of people didn't get to practice Christmas, at least the way they wanted to. So we're not making this up. And so when I read, when I read Way to Go, it, it, it was written 50 years ago. But this, the situations that existed then are the same today. Only more because we now we have 8 billion humans. in this situation. And uh, still have an infinite number of animals in the ocean and on the land, but about 80% have disappeared in the last 50 years. And the spirits aren't happy about any of this. So that reliance, that fourth one I read about the four powers of the practice put into effect is very, very helpful if one gets it and does it and very, very effective as a remedy you can say a medicinal remedy, individually and collectively to where we are right now. With that said, we practice the Dharma by remembering that everything that we do is for everybody else. And the way we state that is a resolution or actually a motivation, which is unique among all spiritual and religious tradition. And I mean unique in the Tibetan presentation of the of Dharma. And it reads like this. In order to a practice enlightenment, for ourselves and limitless sentient beings, our mothers, we now all together take refuge, offer prostrations and other practices of skillful means with the guidance of our lamas. That's the motivation. 
Then the Lama is presented as a support six ways. First of all, we go for refuge to all the Lamas of all the traditions. for this guidance. We go for refuge to all the items, the deities that they present, get, that we gather in our mandala practices of sutra and tantra. We go for refuge to all the Buddhas, those humans who have practiced and gone beyond. We go for refuge to all this supreme dharma, of the Sutra and Tantra tradition. We go for refuge to all the noble Sangha of the teachers and those who are practicing using these methods. And we go for refuge to all the Dakas and Dakinis who are the protectors and defenders of the Dharma inseparable from the Lamas, body, speech, and mind. And these six, all the are about the eye of transcending awareness of states of higher intelligence. Three jewels, Buddha Dharma Sangha, the three roots of Tantra, Lama deities and protectors. The first prayer of the resolution or motivation is chanted in Sanskrit. as the communication to the spirits that we are interested in their well-being and their help to us. Then we chant the refuge prayer of the three jewels and the three roots. Walden Lama Dampa Nam La Chan Su Chia Yedam Chilkor Vila So Nam La Chan Su Chia Sanje Jung Dende Nam La Chav Su Chiva Dung Pecher Nam La Chav Su Chiva Pau Pe Gendu Nam La Chav Su Chiva Pau Ho Gandro Chok Yung Chumne Chok Nam La Chapsuchio attached to each one of those refuge lines simply means that we all together are taking this refuge. And in your mind, all the animals, humans, and spirits in the entire universe are taking this then you enter into Bodhisattva training school with the two Bodhicittas. Of the six perfections of Bodhisattva practice, taking, in, taking us into the insight of the voidness of the reality of all that exists. Through the Buddha, Dharma, and this supreme assembly, we go for refuge until enlightenment. May I, through merit, gain from practicing the six bodhisattva disciplines, called the six perfections, accomplish Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings, which are all the animals, all the spirits, and all the humans in this universe, past, present, and future. And that prayer in Sanskrit 
Sanje Chodam Choki Chodam Jang Chu Bardu Dagne Chaksu Chi Dagi Jin So Ji Pe So Naki Chola Penjur Sanje Jupar Cho The six bodhisattva perfections are perfected by practicing each of the six, by applying them to the relative situation of everything as it is, in deep doo-doo, or to the ultimate situation on the ultimate level, with the sutra and tantra practices so that we quickly move into these higher states of awareness and intelligence that liberates us and causes healing. So what is this bodhicitta? A healing program. Is it a religion? Not really. It, it isn't about taking a birth in some wonderful spirit celestial situation as all the religions are indicating. Rather, it is to be a bodhisattva on the path of experiencing through practice, the true nature of your awareness, which we all have awareness. It's just that it's very limited because of our emotional preoccupation and the judgment of everything that we say, do, and think. So yes, we use this relatively to compensate for that. With each of the six disciplines, but we also use them on the level of higher intelligence. That this is an infinitely wonderful universe, and all the beings in it are infinite in number, and that we have in our highest na higher nature of truth, infinite potential to do something about that, with that. And that's the first Bodhisattva training method of generosity, which we just exemplified through these holy days of Christmas and now the New Year. So generosity is expressed both on the relative level of giving material and good advice to our friends, relatives, and people we have contact with, and then to the animal world, benefiting our environment and taking care of animals, even domesticating some, and also to the infinite spirit world. The second bodhisattva practice is to move with the diligence of our practice on a daily basis to practice morality with ethics 
and good manner as part of the program of morality, the discipline of that, which you could simplify down to three things. Don't harm yourself, don't harm others, and don't harm, intentionally harm the environment. In fact, do everything you can to be kind and considerate. And those three, to those three things. The third is diligence or pr practice with patience. Patience is by itself is absolutely necessary to deal with your own limited awareness, which is so involved with attachment, aversion, pride, jealousy, and delusion. But you have to do that by also extending it to the patients, to all the others that are have the same difficulties. Your experience only each of them in a different way. And understand that we're all even, equal, but all have different tendencies. So diligence and perseverance are extended to the first three bodhisattva practices. And then to the practice of meditation, which without meditation, one cannot achieve insight or liberate oneself from samsara. And when we do the meditation practice, the training is to involve the imagination with sutra and tantric practice. And then with that imaginary process developing, evolving, imagine what is appropriate to take place. What is beneficial? Not only for the world around us and the beings in it, but for oneself. What is a beneficial way to speak? What is the appropriate way to act? What is the appropriate way to think about self and others? Now, these first five bodhisattva trainings with time and practice will propel you into the sixth one, which is insight into your true nature and how to use it appropriately, beneficially, skillfully. And the guidance of the Lama, plural, is all about that. And all of them, those gurus, do this. And I found by having many different teachers that actually one is enough, but many, many is more fun. That, that the same theme is presented of compassion, insight, and power as your way to be, way to go, as Taisa Jirivache said. But each of them have their own lineage, training program, deities, and that each and every one of them will only give you advice that's appropriate for you based on what they are doing. For instance, if they give you the Chandra Z practice, they are performing the Chandra Z practice. 
And so they won't give you any suture or tantra training that they are already proficient in. And you should know that. And then you take it on with their guidance out of honored devotion and respect for them. Keeping the foot of meditation as this idea of voidness and the actual practice to develop compassion and power and insight with your body, speech and mind, just as you are. Young, middle-aged, old, educated, not educated, civilized, uncivilized, <laughs> male, female. Let's practice. Medicine. All the medicine of the planet applied by all the medical organizations only treat the symptoms of what? Physical, mental, and emotional dis-ease. That's actually two words. Dis-ease. In order for a disease to be remedied, you must also treat not only the symptoms of that disease, but the cause. Now the cause is the same for everybody. The cause of disease is an emotional program instilled over many, many lifetimes That, that arise because we judge everything. And that's built into all social programs. It's judgment call. But where does it start? It starts in the mind of the human who, who he or she judges her thoughts or how they think of themselves. And the judgment causes the emotional program to arise and become habitual by constant use over many, many lifetimes. And you can't find a beginning to this, but you can find its existence in the present situation by exactly that judgment call. And you and I and everybody do it like this. When a thought arises, if it's about something we like, including the thought itself, we have attachment to it by judging it to be good. So attachment arises. That escalates in desire and thousands and thousands of other mental affliction. If we judge the thought or the, the object of the thought, the thought is the subject, as bad, then immediately aversion arises. And that escalates into anger and hatred and rage and thousands of other emotional afflictions. Now that's just Two judgment calls, good and bad. But then we have this idea that certain qualities like being smart are superior or being religious 
okay? or for whatever, being a certain way is superior. Then we have others about individuals and groups of individuals and happenings are inferior. If you think things are superior, then you become arrogant with that feeling. Proud. If you think something or someone is, or group is inferior or a thought, then jealousy arises. Now, just those four categories of conflicting emotions grow on their own through habitual use into thousands of other afflictions. And the key is the ignorance that this is not actually self-existing. These are created programs, just like you create what you want to see on your computer or your iPhone or TV or whatever. So ignorance is the basis. Ignorance is not knowing. Not knowing evolves into delusion, which is prevalent in American society, along with arrogance. This delusion is, is a state of bewilderment. What to do? So the lamas all say you must connect to your consciousness and see that you are doing, that you are using this judgment, judgmental mind to cre create your situation of pain and suffering. So obviously the remedy is to move into a state of awareness of non-judgmental. In other words, don't be saying things, judging things as good or bad, superior or inferior, and don't be stupid. The antidote to ignorance is awareness of your true nature. Because there's no limit to that. There's no boundaries. You're not confined. It's an infinite state of infinite potential. That's a lot of potential. And there's nowhere to go with it because that's a universal theme. That's the way the universe is. The universe does not judge anything or anyone. It doesn't operate that way. At the same time, someone says, well, what if everybody was already a Buddha? totally intelligent. Well, if that was a situation, we wouldn't be here talking about judgment mm. and the antidote of that as the Dharma. So there, there's no separation. Samsara and Nirvana are the same mind. What is Nirvana? Nirvana is a state of Peace and tranquility. And we use that state of peace and tranquility in many different ways, but in meditation, attaining that is the platform to activate higher states of awareness. Excuse me. Christmas time. Carolers. 
heard something. <laughs> Excuse me, we interrupted. It's Christmas time, and we're in a neighborhood of Christmas cheer. <laughs> <laughs> they call it Holy Day. <laughs> um, this this practice. is to extend healing to yourself, others, and the environment. And the theme that we use are the five elements that your mother created you with. Earth, actually, they arose this way. First space, a place in the mother to take the birth. Then water, earth, then water, then fire, than air. Now those five elements that your mother created you out of with, my mother never let me know think that there was any other way to be in her company. You must always remember I created you. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. And we'll get along just fine. <laughs> Right, Ma. <laughs> but in Tibetan Buddhism, it's the same. Don't let anybody tell you that this universe is made out of anything other than those five elements. And they are used for healing. So this healing program is exactly what shamanistic Lamaism as a sutra and tantra tradition, moving from Hinayana of the Hindus and other religions into this tradition, is all about earth, water, fire, air, space. And when you leave this universe, those five elements disappear in your body one into the other, either all at once or depending on how you're leaving the body slowly. First, the earth element disappears into the water element and you have no desire for food, can't eat. And the water element disappears into the fire element and you can't take water, can't drink. Then the fire element becomes uncontrollable with heat or cold as it dissolves into the air element, and finally, you can't breathe. And at that time of losing the breath, the consciousness starts to move into the infinite category of space and light. And that is the same for everybody. Whether your consciousness of the procedure of what I just described, which is a practice in shamanistic Islamism, <coughs> to keep your mind focused with what's going on in the present, as these elements do disappear one into the other, is that when you enter into the space element, you're in a state of infinite potential and you want to relax. as you lose connection to temporal existence, time, and enter into a timeless dimension of being, which for some of us who practice meditation, we experience through these practices. So we know that it's, we know that reality. So my teacher, Carla Rinpoche, when living with us on Maui, and I say us, many, many people together, we had a big community, assembled us and taught us the five elements in a two-day retreat based on the geometrical shape or symbol of the element. Now, 
everything in mankind existence is based on symbols. Contrary to some psychiatric professors claiming it's all based on thinking of self. But this symbolic energy is the planet we're sitting on, or Earth energy, as a six-sided cube, yellow and num yellow in color or gold. Then here, I'll get it. Where is it? The water element is coming, <laughs> which is the nature of most of what our body is formed of and the world planet we sit on is visualized as a blue sphere of light. So you have the six-sided yellow cube of light for the earth, and then the blue sphere. Then the fire element, which is number three, is a four-sided pyramid shaped like this with a base made of light. The air symbol is a half sphere of green light which has a, a lid or a cap. And the space element, similar to the water element, is white, a white sphere. And he says the person, the reason we use these geometric forms is because in the process of coming into this realm of existence in the human or animal through a mother, the space is the reference. Then in that, the other four, earth, water, fire, and air, evolve to the to the situation we have of light and space being the energy of the universe and everything in it, existing or not existing because the universe presents itself that way. And in our consciousness, our thoughts are very similar to that. They come out of space. They, they have a form or a symbol or whatever appears, and then they disappear back into space. So Karl Rimshe, after explaining it that way, then he said, we're going to use these five symbols in meditations for the next two days. Sit with your back straight, hands in a comfortable position on your knees or in your lap, head slightly tilted forward, mouth closed, breathe through the nose if you can. Eyes open to the space two feet in front And bring your awareness to your breathing. Inhale. Exhale. Now in your breath is the five element. So we'll start by three clearing breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Then bring your awareness to the breath and as you inhale, imagine the air containing the elements Fills your lungs with white light. This becomes the energy of the middle breath, 
called the absorption breath. And you visualize that energy to, to going through every cell in your body in a flash of red light. And you take these two breaths, the white and the red, it's a powerful healing breath, exhaling out the nose, blue light, the color of the sky, to everyone in space, in the sky. Inhale, white light, fill your lungs. Absorption breath, red light, flashing through every cell in your body. These two codes as the blue light exhaled out your nose to space. Then to establish this three light remedy, Count to yourself 21 of these three light breaths. Inhale. When you reach the 21st count, take your focus off the breath, gather the three lights into a tiny, visualize it, come together into a tiny point of light and center it in your chest, creating a bindu, a chakra. It's also called a tigri in Tibetan. The moment you visualize this reference point of light in your heart chakra, it immediately connects to the infinite light of space. So for a few moments, relax in that state of spatial awareness. No meditation, just be present and ponder space. Then again, creating this reference point in your heart chakra, imagine that point of light to grow into a small, as you can imagine, clear light sphere of light, like a, like a bubble.
And imagine that small sphere of clear light to grow, expand outward to create your choice of one of the five elements you want to use in the healing remedy of the five elements healing meditation practice. And tonight we choose the element earth. Emphasizing the healing property of that in reference to our form body, the small fear of clear light grows into that six sided cube of yellow light labeled earth, about the size of your thumbnail in your heart chakra. Then imagine it to move out in front of your chest and up before your eyes, two feet in front. See it there, imagine it there. Then that, from that position, imagine it to grow inside to a large room six-sided room of yellow light, imagining yourself, your form body, just as you are, inside. Re receiving the healing energy of the five elements, but specifically the earth element as a remedy. In the same way, your food is a remedy. Then imagine this six-sided yellow sphere labeled Earth to be shared with an area 25 miles in every direction. Here in Hawaii, we imagine this island of Kauai and surrounding ocean inside the six-sided cube. Extending this healing energy to the beings in that quadrant. Then imagine the six sided spirit to grow in size to completely enclose Mother Earth, including her atmosphere. Extended in size to completely enclose the solar system. Billions of miles in every direction. The next step is to visualize it to grow in size to completely enclose our spiral dish-shaped galaxy. And move beyond the boundaries of your conceptual mind and imagine it to merge with the infinite light of boundless space. And again, relax in this dimension of being. Be present. 
and contemplate space. And from this state of spatial awareness, of which has no center or boundary, again generate the six-sided sphere, including again enclosing the galaxy. Keeping imagination and focus together, contracted to just enclosing the solar system. Shrink it smaller and smaller to just enclosing Mother Earth. Then to just enclosing the town, city, island, or a large area of where you are doing this practice. Then take all of that healing energy into the six-sided cube, just enclosing your form body, just as you are inside. To finish, bring the sphere to its original small size, about the size of your thumbnail in front of your eyes. Then the chest level and into your heart chakra. Shrink it to a tiny point of light and again relax in the state of spatial awareness. No center. No circumference, no boundary. To finish your practice, this practice, bring your awareness to in front of your eyes. And extend it through practice. And into your field of reference. Hands palm together if you wish to dedicate the results of this practice, the benefit to all living beings. Everywhere. Happy New Year. In Tibetan Buddhism, everywhere Tibet, India, Bhutan, Sikkim, other countries, Taiwan, they build these monuments. They're called children's or stupids. There are 13 different kinds of these in the Tibetan tradition and used for different purposes, but 
the geographic, the geometrical formation of the stupa is symbolic of the five elements. Earth as a square part of the bottom, water as this upside down bowl shape, fire as these gold discs stacked one upon the other, air as a reflection of the light in water, like a lotus reflecting in a pond, and the sun and moon at the top as the element space. So this is earth, water, fire, air, space. And at the very top, there's a little flame symbol pointing to the sky. And as you can see, the geographical dimensions shrink in that same way as less and less substantial until all is left is space. So this is a reference of the universe of this five elements. And some are to honor the female energy and some to honor the male energy of your natural mind of awareness. Here in Hawaii, we have one of these to represent the females. It's called a lotus supa. Then because of your innate nature being the same nature as the universe, natural, these natural five elements possess five states of awareness as the antidote to your mental afflictions of the judgmental mind. And each one of these, earth, water, fire, and air, become that wisdom incorporated with that element. In this way, the wisdom nature is described as the male aspect and the elemental nature, the female energy, inseparable. We have one of these 18 feet high located near our Dharma Center that we use for giving teachings, retreats, and healing. We send people there to heal and meditate. Also, we made this chart of the five elements. Each one to explain the, the natural energy of the we call Dakini, the female. Earth, water, fire, air, space. With the same color codes as those five geometric symbols I showed you. Then on the other side, the five wisdoms of the same color code, but only as spheres. Sphere symbolizes unlimited, boundless. For instance, like the Earth's energy supporting it, so the Moon's energy lighting up the sky, or the Sun's energy lighting up our solar system. So it's all about this light energy of the universe, all pervasive. But this all pervasive nature is simply understanding that everything is integrated into you. Everything that exists, everyone, is your support. Number two, you must act accordingly to that, which is the air element that's always moving. But that action is bodhisattva training. That voidness is the true nature of everything, and understanding that is the nature of your mind and everything is ultimate awareness. Everything is equal, or in a state of equanimity, one taste, levels the playing field, takes away this idea of 
superior or inferior. And finally, the fire energies or the red light sphere of the discerning awareness of your natural mind, discerning that what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. And that those two are always working together until there's only the appropriate. So discerning awareness is the fire energy. Same color code, both sides. Roll it up to the light, the light joins those two. But the Dakini symbolism of the five elements becomes the Buddha families and their wisdom nature. So we use the word family because we're integrating into these families. Five energy fields, just like you have five elements. Now we're going to do the medicine Buddha practice of peace. One of you has your, excuse me, one of you has your speakers on. No? Please mute. Please mute. Abby said, please mute. We use the symbol of integration that everything is interconnected with the sound whom. So each of these five symbols has their sound. And each of the five Winston natures has their vibration. That there is no such thing as separation is the sound boom, which is the all pervasive nature of your mind in its wisdom mode of healing, which sets up a healing mo modality to treat the cause on an infinite level of application. That means all disease, physical, mental, emotional, and for some of us, spiritual. So the whom, which looks like this in Sanskrit, becomes the creation sound of the Medicine Buddha. And the Medicine Buddha becomes the symbol of the taking, reaching maturity in the human condition and it's visualized in blue, as is the seed soul of creation sound, whom, that this applies to every form of conflicting energy, harmful energy, every form of disease, and treats it systematically and its cause. And so we place that, and placing that in front of the symbol, and it is the bowl-shaped symbol at the center of the stupa in which usually there's a male or female Buddha image statue placed in the door, in the door of the stupa. But this is called the Vajra family, indestructible, all-pervasive. It treats the primary worst cause of pain and suffering, as, which is anger, which evolves into hatred and rage. And it is called mere light wisdom, so that aggression never takes place. And it is the Vajra or form body relating to water, which is a color called blue, of being in human. And its directional is east, where the sun comes up. Now this poem together with these five symbols, are your wisdom nature 
as intelligence, not like we relate to being smart. Intelligence is a heartfelt loving kindness spontaneously directed to everyone and to the world around it. And that spontaneous spontaneity is all pervasive. That's the vibration of the home with concern for the well-being of sentient beings and then doing, acting with this practice, an antidote, bringing an antidote. Not only for yourself, but everyone you have karma with, all your family members, mother, father, relatives, friends, business associations, teachers, enemies. And so when you extend this outward, the first person you extend it to is your mother who created you. And you imagine her as the symbol of the medicine Buddha, blue in color, in woman form or male form. This symbol can be interpreted either way. Sitting on an eight petal lotus, which means there's eight primary causes of disease. Four, five of them are emotional, based on judgmental mind, attachment, aversion, pride, jealousy, and ignorance. And three of them are formed by outer references of sorcery, which a common term today is witchcraft or Hinduism. <laughs> Other spiritual practices. <laughs> The second one is that. religions practice with a harmful motivation of the person practicing that religion to go to heaven. And the third one is to deal with the animals, humans, and spirits that want to harm us. So on the Buddha's, under the Buddha is an eight-petaled lotus. And when people teach the Dharma, they start with the eight-spoked wheel. Well, that's the same. This reference of the eight-spoked wheel, the eight ways to, to be a Buddhist, is referenced as eight-petaled lotus the Buddha is sitting on. And on each petal is a different Buddha symbol. Five of them were to deal with the emotional, major emotional conflicting program. And the other three, as I explained it, is the three, the outer references of Harmful activity aimed at us by humans, animals, and spirits. So if you think of the eight lotuses, attachment, aversion, pride, jealousy, and ignorance, then you have the reference of sorcery, harmful practice of religions, and then harm intended by animals, humans, and spirits generally as the cause. And then from that, the outer wheel references all these infinite kinds of harmful energies as disease that requires a remedy. And that's the universal sphere of this energy and the five different colors are the five elements and five states of this energy. When you are practicing this, you need an empowerment from a Lama. 
myself or the Dalai Lama or any man or woman who is in that category of teaching the Dharma that knows the two natures of the mind and what to do about what to do with that information. So the Lama is the medicine Buddha. Any of the six refuges are the medicine Buddha. All of the Bodhisattva disciplines are the medicine Buddha. And if you're doing it in a Santra text, Sutra text, with the guidance of the Lama, that's how, that's how it was taught in Tibet. But if you use it with this symbol of the Sisa Wope and the mantra, and you as a medicine Buddha, then your Lama appears in front as the empowering factor as the medicine Buddha with three lights coming from the Lama's three places, white light from the Lama's forehead into your forehead with a sound ohm to be the medicine Buddha in practice. Inseparable from the all the teachers from the time of Shakyamuni Buddha 2,600 years ago down to the present day. Then red light from the Lama's throat is the voice application of guidance referenced with the sound ah into your throat. Then the third empowerment is the wisdom empowerment of how to visualize this healing energy program, all pervasive, and how to apply it individually and collectively to these eight causes as a remedy or antidote. So you see these three lights shining from the Lama in front, whoever he or she, into your three places. Then the Om appears inside your head, the Ah in your throat, and the Om in a blue sphere in your heart. And the Lama melts into you. When you can see the Lama and these three lights simultaneously shining into your three places, as the Lama melts into you like water into water, you become the body, speech, and mind of the teacher, the guru. And that application sets up the universe as a vehicle of healing. It's called the Dharmakaya. Then the deities, of which there are 1,000 male and female deities used in these practices, become the spiritual application of light and energy as the nature of your mind, joy or bliss. That's called the Sambhogakaya vehicle. And then the Lama becomes the Dharmanakaya of loving kindness, compassion, and power and insight, which is who you are in practice. You're moving with that kind of energy. This energy has no boundary. It pervades the heavenly realms, it pervades the war and war god realm, it pervades the human and animal world, wherever they take birth in the universe on planets, and it pervades the demonic spirit world of the pretas, deprived spirits, and the Demon spirits of hatred and anger that have abusive nature. All being purified, transformed, 
out of those states into the human condition to reach maturity. That's the theme of loving kindness, of this practice. So sound the home, visualize it in your heart, learn to draw it if you can, physically. Dark blue in color, three-dimensional, give it thickness. Three times. Chant home. Oh. 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 As to bring your body, speech, and mind together. Then the four applications to obtain the quality of being in union with the Lama is four homes. Oh. Om, Om, Om. Then the first three and those four are chanted three times to create the vehicle of the universe as Bodhisattva training universe to attain maturity in the human condition. The Lama as the generator of this symbol of the medicine Buddha of the light energy of bliss and then the nature of the Lama to be loving kindness, compassion, power and insight is, is the vehicle of its active action And that's the last three homes, the Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, and Nirmanakaya. So if you don't have a text, you're not reading this as a sutra, practicing it as a sutra by yourselves with others, which is how they do it in the Dharma centers, generally speaking, then start your practice with chanting these 10 homes. They think you are the medicine Buddha and the energy from your heart and the sound home and the mantra vibration goes to all six realms everywhere in the universe to cause healing to take place on both any symptomatic situation or causal situation. And the mantra is Tan Yatha Om Bikanzi Bikanzi Maha Bikanzi Razda Samungate So Ha Raja the Om Bikanzi Bikanzi Maha Bikanzi Rasa Samagate Soha Tajato Bikanzi Bikanzi Maha Bikanzi Rasa Samagate Soha Tajato Bikanzi Bikanzi Maha Bikanzi Rasa Samagate Soha Tajato Bikanzi Bikanzi Maha-bhikanzi, Rasa-samagate-soham. Tajatho-om, bhikanzi, bhikanzi, Maha-bikanzi, Rasa-samagate-soham. Tajatho-om, 
The seeds of the home encased in a five color sphere of light has this mantra circling it. It is stationary and the, the letters face outward. And they start with the vibration of Tadyatha, which means all of the hearing energy of all of this practice of Tibetan Buddhism. Then Om in front, Tadyatha Om, then Bikanzi, Bikanzi, Maha, Bikanzi, Raza Samangate Soha. Om Tadyatha Bikanzi, Bikanzi, Maha, Bikanzi. Rasa Samogate Soha Tadyatha Om Bikanzi Bikanzi Maha Bikanzi Rasa Samogate Soha So these letters are actually clockwise. This sphere are clockwise and they're horizontal. So Om Tadyatha Om Bikanzi Bikanzi Maha Bikanzi Rasa Samogate so on. They circle clockwise, they are stationary. <clears throat> They're, each letter is a different color and they face outward. The vibration of the whom treats the cause of pain and suffering, and the mantra teaches all the symptomatic occurrences of disease which are infinite in number, and they are applied on an, this mantra is applied on an infinite application 
to infinite sentient beings of the six realms So you think the home and the mantra vibration together blaze through your rainbow bliss body of the medicine Buddha, which pervades all the realms like the sun pervades our solar system. You visualize like that as you say the mantra. So it all starts here, home, then the mantra sound, then use the medicine Buddha, then blazing energy in every direction of loving kindness, compassion, power, and insight, wisdom take place. <laughs> So va la jata o be kanzi be kanzi ma ga be kanzi raza samugate so va ta jata o the energy enters you be kanzi your body be kanzi your speech ma ga be kanzi into your mind raza healing takes place samugate on the level of maturity of a Buddha. Soha, all pervasive, never, never, never ceasing. And all pervasive and infinite application, timeless. Tayado beganzi beganzi maha beganzi raja samukati soha. 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 Tajato Bikanzi Bikanzi Maha Bikanzi Rasa Samgati Soha Tajato Bikanzi Bikanzi Maha Bikanzi Rasa Samgati Soha So the sphere of energy that pervades the medicine Buddha, this white energy field is the, is the spatial awareness. This one around the head is activity of the imagination. It holds a myrobalum fruit which feels all symptomatic uh, occurrences of disease in the body. Then a bowl of wisdom nectar to heal all the causes. Blue in color, wearing the robes of a, a llama. Eight petal lotus on a lion's throne with the cross vajras of the four, five Buddha family assembled <clears throat> as its format, and a square throne of the earth symbol, this six birth, as the earth element support in a natural setting with the sun and the moon in the sky and lotus petals symbolizing this energy to all beings in the human condition, especially by Buddha then. Yeah. Five minutes. So now we're going to dissolve the medicine Buddha into you as a medicine Buddha. And when this takes place, you dissolve into the mantra in your heart center, bringing all sentient beings with you as your children. Then you, as the medicine Buddha, dissolve into the mantra, the mantra starting with the Om. Each symbol dissolves into the home. The home in a five color sphere of light shrinks to a point of light and merges with boundless space. And you sit present in that dimension, that reality of voidness space. 
I'm going to sound the bell three times. Follow the sound of the bell. Body. Speech. Mind. Be present in bliss. Dedicate the virtue of this practice to all sentient beings. Kewa di nirdu dam, chagya chapo drubya ne, chowa chenke malo pa, de yi sala go parsho, sanje kusum nempa chem la dam, choni meger nempa chem la dam, gendu miche du pa chem la ki, jitar go ma monam du pa sho. By this virtue, having realized Mahamudra, may we quickly establish every being without a single exception in that state. By the blessings of the three bodies of the Buddha being accomplished by the truth of the Dharma itself being unchanging, and by the blessing of the wishes of the Sangha, that's us being unwavering, may this dedication prayer be fulfilled. May all the Lamas have long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity, and may all their wishes be fulfilled. May all beings be happy, free of suffering, and through our practice establish in bliss and equanimity. Aloha and Tashi Delay and Happy New Year of the Female Water Rabbit. Thank you, Lama. Mahalo. <laughs> Mahalo. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>